I am here with Mr. Willie Wonka, aka Gareth Snup, who is kind of very well known in the theatre world. He's done just about every show from, we're talking Les Mis, Phantom, Sunset Boulevard, Cats, Godspell, uh, The Full Monty, Maiden Dagenham, the list goes on and on. And of course, originated some roles in those shows as well. He is now flying over to Manchester in the Glass Elevator in July from the 11th to the 30th to the Palace Theatre with Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And I, for one, am very excited. The inner child in me is going nuts right now. So thank you for joining us, Gareth. And My uh, pleasure. And chat. So Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, we've um, obviously we've got this story that everybody knows and loves from Roald Dahl. I could go on and on about it inside out, upside down, but I have Mr. Willy Wonka here. Can you tell us all about this glorious story? Well, I mean, what's the, what's to tell? I mean, I think <laughs> most people uh, are aware of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Willy Wonka, but it's extraordinary putting putting a uh, a novel like this onto the stage. We all know about the, the two famous movies of Gene Wilder and Johnny Depp, but putting it onto the stage is glorious and it, it kind of is befitting. I, I think it's where this story belongs. The characters are so vivid, they're so alive, so colorful, that it seems to be the perfect home to tell this story. Um, and and the, show, the show itself is a show of two halves. In, in, in the first half, of course, you meet the poor Bucket family in their shack with the grandparents and the mum, and you meet all the golden ticket winners. And then act two happens and wow, boom, the stage is flooded with color, with these amazing rooms that he tours the children around in his factory. I mean, it is a feast for the eyes. It's extraordinary. Um, so and of course ending up in the glass elevator taking charlie up there and giving him the keys to the factory uh amongst the stars and the stratosphere i mean it's absolutely magical honestly it really really is and you've mentioned obviously there we've got these films we've got the gene wilder version we've got the johnny depp version um willy wonka is is a complex fella he's kind of intense <laughs> but harsh, he's generous, but uh, he's, he's mixed. So what kind of Mr. Wonka are you going to bring to the stage? Well, uh, well, it's, it's interesting because unlike the movies, of course, you've got a live audience in front of you. And although he's taking the families and the children through the tour of his factory, the audience become golden ticket winners as well. Right. They have to be. So he, you know, addresses them as golden ticket winners. And he takes them on the tour through the factory. So my Willy Wonka has, has to make a, a relationship, a very quick, quick relationship with the audience. He's got it. They've got to trust him. He's got to try and get them on his side. And I suppose I do that through humor uh, because everybody trusts someone and can negotiate someone if they've got a sense of humor, I think. And it's a wicked sense of humor. <laughs> He's, he's, you know, he, Willie doesn't take any prisoners. I mean, no. I mean, he's extraordinary. He's so multifaceted. I mean, he's unpredictable. Uh, he's uh, he's a quick thinking man. He's the showman, you know, dressed in this extraordinary way that Roald Dahl describes him, which always puzzles me. I was thinking, why? Why is he dressed like that? But it's that showman in him, you know, and but. So I, I think I, that's how I uh, create my Willy Wonka on the stage. Uh, and it's that special relationship he has with the audience. He's, he's very sort of, like say, mystique and magical as well. And constant like surprises around every corner. And we see that kind of magic within the factory itself. So... You've got, I mean, you've got like um, children eating sweets and ballooning up. You've got children zapping from TV screen to TV screen. <laughs> is that all? I don't want you to give too much away, but no. is that kind of all stagecraft or was there sort of an element of um, magicians or someone coming in to kind of guide through that? Well, uh, with as you say, without giving too much away, uh, there is an enormous amount of magic in this show. <laughs> 
uh, and illusion. So, uh, but when it comes to, for example, of Violet Beauregard <laughs> bouncing across the stage as a giant blueberry, <laughs> I mean, there's no magic there. I mean, it's, it's just a giant blueberry bouncing across the stage. <laughs> It's fabulous. It really is. And uh, but yes, uh, with the Mike TV, where he is shrunk down and put in and, and put into the into the television screen, that's done through illusion. Yeah. Uh, a lot of it. So, but uh, I, I won't give too much away. No, no, <laughs> and and the magic, even you know, illusion and all of that. That the, the magic is this factory. I mean, it's everyone's dream, right? And. I, I I will never forget just reading it and it coming to life in my mind. Particularly, I think my favourite room is the edible garden when you first walk in and you've got the chocolate fountain and the chocolate and all these things. So do you yeah. have a favourite room in the chocolate factory? Well, do I have a favourite room? That's interesting. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think one of my favourite rooms is when in the mixing room, uh, which is the second room they go into after the chocolate room with the chocolate uh, chocolate waterfall and the chocolate river. In the mixing room, he shows all the families. He just shows off all his inventions, and that that's wonderful. I mean, you know, you've got the the you know the everlasting gobstoppers. You've got the gastromolecular um, chewing gum that Violet. I, I, you know, he warns everybody as well. Let me just say this about Willy Wonka. He warns the children, he say, don't eat the, the, the bubble gum, the chewing gum. Don't go into the chocolate waterfall. Don't go into the vanishing cabinet. And, they are, and they're so entitled and spoilt, these children, that they don't listen. No. <laughs> they, they just don't listen. And it's not Wonka's fault. He warns them, don't do it. And they do it. I mean, granted. He revels in their misfortune. <laughs> Quite Just a, a little bit. bit. <laughs> but, hey, you know, that <laughs> Willie, you know, um, what do you do? Uh, but, you know, but in a way, it's like a morality tale. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, and, and that's what's enduring about it, you know. Um, but yeah, I think my, my, one of my favorite, I mean, apart from the glass elevator, I have to say, which is my favorite scene in the whole of the show, because because they, when he takes Charlie up into the elevator, he looks at him and he thinks, oh, my goodness, it's me. Hmm. And he's gone through the whole of Act Two without realising it. And he suddenly looks into his eyes and he goes, it's me. And he takes him up into the glass elevator, gives him the keys to the factory. Yeah. And they sing this beautiful duet, The View From Here, where they're floating amongst the stars and the, and, and the stratosphere and the planets. And, and they sing the view from here and he becomes this compassionate man with a huge heart and that's my favorite scene because i think that's the real willy Wonka. yeah the, the other is, is is the showman yes you know yeah yeah and in that moment you see the authentic him yeah yes absolutely yeah and are you allowed to tell us does it fly or is that to come and see and find out well, I mean, I, I would, no, I'll say this: it flies. Make no mistake. Yes. Oh. It, oh, yeah. It goes up and it goes through the stratosphere. Yeah, I so. mean, I was going to say I have seen it in London, but I know that this is a slightly different production, so I was yeah. just, yeah. Um, and no, we, no, it, it definitely flies. It flies. Oh, it's so magical, so magical. It um, really and obviously, is. you've mentioned one of the songs there. We've got obviously. Um, the, the two from from the Gene Wilder film, Pure Imagination and Candyman. But then yeah. there's this beauty. I mean, you've mentioned one of the songs there, this beautiful new score from ballad to big, wacky musical numbers to pop. I mean, what can you tell us about the songs? Well, I mean, they, they, it, they're so varied. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've got, you know, the, the, the queen of pop, which is Violet Beauregard's number <laughs> because she's obsessed with chewing gum. And, and that's a very rocky number, very poppy number. And then Wonka gets this extraordinary song at the top of Act Two, which is a huge patter song. It's about eight minutes long, where, he's where he introduces himself to each of the families. And it is relentless, the speed <laughs> of it. It's fabulous. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful song, very witty. Yeah. Um, and 
And then, and then, as I said, you've got, you know, you've got this beautiful duet with Charlie in the elevator, the view from here, beautiful ballads. I mean, it's because you've got all different styles of music in it. Um, something for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And um, we've kind of talked about like it is a, a slightly new production and we've got all these new things in like um, gender neutral casting. You've got the sign language. You've got regional accents and all this fabulous technology. Has all of this kind of made it more accessible for, for audiences to come and enjoy it? I think so. Absolutely. Um, because it's a truly family show. I mean, I know many actors say this about their shows, but this is <laughs> a, a, honestly a, a truly a family show from grandparents to young children. And the children particularly can relate to these children in, 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 in the show. And, uh, and because it's, the casting is quite diverse, there, there is an opportunity for the children to identify with, with, with these children and to see themselves in them. And I think that's really, really important, you know, particularly in, in, the, in, in the age that we live in. Yeah. Uh, and it, uh, it it certainly works on that front. Brilliant. And with all of these young people in the cast, um, how does that does that kind of impact the rest of you um, with sort of that youthful invigoration? Like basically, who is the biggest child? Is it the adults or is it the children? <laughs> well, I mean, it's Willy Wonka, isn't he? He's the, <laughs> yeah. he's the biggest kid of them all. I mean. <laughs> The, the thing about Willy Wonka is he's not interested in the adults at all because he just he just looks at them and think, but well, they they're bad parents. They they didn't do this the job very well <laughs> on these children. And he's far more interested in the children because he he's clearly looking for someone to hand the factory over to. And he's hoping that one of these golden ticket winners are go are going to 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 fit. And and or, or what he sees in them, he, he's fascinated by them because they're so outrageous. They're so entitled to visit these children. And when, when they get themselves into these pickles, <laughs> what, he, what he is, he's just disappointed, actually. You know, he kind of revels in their, in, yeah. in their predicaments, right? And in the mess they've got themselves into. But deep down, there's a lot of disappointment. Yeah. You know? um, so, but they, they, they're so diverse, these children. They're all so different. <laughs> the children love it. <laughs> they love watching naughty kids, oh, don't yeah. they? Yeah. yeah. Do you think there's an element within that, obviously you've said he, he kind of revels in when they don't follow the rules, but is it almost like, do you think he's teasing them a little bit with that kind of, if there's a red button and you tell someone not to press the red button, they're going well, to press it. <laughs> they, I mean, th this is a, a matter of interpretation. And <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it's up to the individual uh, sitting out there watching it to decide for themselves. But uh, I have to confess, of course, I mean, if you're holding up a strip of gum and say it's very dangerous to eat it, <laughs> right, because there's something wrong with the blueberry pie, and Violet, of course, impossible to resist it because she's the queen of pop and he knows that yeah and he's holding, holding it in front of her face <laughs> <laughs> so obviously she's going to take it he screams out no don't it's dangerous <laughs> and looking at her with expectation thinking what what oh, he can't I'm... wait for is said what on earth is going to happen to her yeah <laughs> so he's, he's fascinated as well by it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, and obviously, we can say, quite safely say that nobody comes out of the chocolate factory the same way that they went in. It does alter them. <laughs> <Yeah>. So, <laughs> so have you found that being in Charlie in the Chocolate Factory has it changed you in any way? Has it altered you? Well, I I think every role you play, you you learn a little bit about yourself. <laughs> That's for sure. And particularly with Willy Wonka, you know, in order to make it work, you know, you, you have to invest a huge amount of yourself into it, massive amount of yourself. And and I always remember the director, James Brining, saying to me, he said, Gareth, he said, I don't know where Gareth starts and Willy ends. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a little bit for somebody to be that to observe that. I thought, oh, my goodness, what's happened to me? <laughs> It sounds so
so exciting, honestly. And it's one of those brilliant, brilliant, classic children's stories. Yeah. Um, I mean, it must be just a bit of a, like you say, to, to be able to just let loose and have fun. It must be like a dream role. It really is a dream role. And also, you, you don't realise the responsibility you have playing this part because everybody knows Willy Wonka. So, you know, you better be careful and get it right because yeah. <laughs> people, you know, they don't like it sometimes. I mean, there were, it was what, but the kids love him. They absolutely adore him. I, I, I didn't realise the full extent of how popular he was and how the kids can relate to Willy Wonka. And there, there was one city, I can't remember which one it was now, but uh, I, I went off on my curtain call and there was a teenager, I don't know, 14, 15 or something, in the front row. I came on to him, I could, but he went, he stood up and he shouted at the top of his voice, Wonka, call me! <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Extraordinary. Brilliant. You know. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. And it clearly does mean so much to so many people. So yeah. thank you, thank you, thank you um, for chatting with us and for bringing this glorious show and your what I'm sure is going to be absolutely amazing, Mr. Willy Wonka to Manchester. Yeah. They're coming to the Palace Theatre from the 11th to the 30th of July, flying by glass elevator, eat as much chocolate as possible in preparation and grab your golden ticket because they are going to sell like hotcakes. Thank you so, so much for chatting with us. I cannot wait to come and see this show. Thank you, guys. Can't wait to see you all. Thank you. Thank you. Come in. It takes a while.